Carrie has now been sober for eight months, and she has just weeks left before she finishes her drug program. This is a difficult time when many participants relapse. I bought this myself, thank you. My own money that I work so hard for. Um, it's not plugged into the amp, so it might not be that loud. But I'll play a little something I made up. I like this. I really like that. I like playing the guitar. Like, I can play my guitar really loud on my amp, and that's when I don't want to listen to anyone. But that's, it's a good way of letting out a lot of feelings and stuff. I'm uh, with Derek and my friend Daniel right now, and we're gonna cruise your pad cake. No, none of that, though. Unless you guys are 21. No. <laughs> well, everybody else? Is everybody else over age? All right, then. Okay, bye. <laughs> Matt. I'm all, well, everybody better be over 21, guy. I didn't think you guys were coming by. For real? I figured you guys were gonna be like, oh, Matt's all drunk over there, you know? Uh, um, the hardest part for me about staying clean and sober is just being around old friends and old activities. <laughs> I worry about going back to what I used to do and not not taking care of what I need to take care of for me. Yeah, I do get tempted sometimes, like when I'm angry or, you know, so when something's going on and I don't want to deal with it. And this is my friend Philip's room. These are like almost all my favorite band. Jimi Hendrix, that's my idol right there. Even though he's smoking a joint, he's my idol. How long, how many years or how many months did you dedicate to your drug use? Four and a half, probably. So what do you think you should dedicate to your recovery? At least twice as long? I want things out of life and the only way that I'm gonna get them is if I go get them. No one's gonna give them to me and I think that by using drugs and not going to school and just not doing anything is not going to get me where I want to be. She's uh, an amazing kid when she's uh, clean. When she's under the influence, she's uh, really difficult, you know, and uh, just, uh, wow, just night and day. Vanessa is halfway through her program at the Muriel Wright Center, and she continues to meet her counselor's expectations. Where's the D at? Where's the D? She has just returned from a weekend home with her mother when after a routine drug test, the staff confront her with some bad news. I'm in. No, I'm out. They found marijuana in my pee test. And I didn't even smoke marijuana. Unfortunately, because of the process, I was going to have to enforce whatever the discipline was. I don't know. I think someone's trying to set me up. I think someone mixed the bottles around. She now feels like she has extra pressure from her family to make sure that she does become somebody because so many people in her life have failed. So sometimes when that pressure is added to somebody, they just want to say, screw it. I can't do it. It's too much for me. I know I'm innocent. You know, yeah, I may come from the streets and I may, you know, I may have lied in my past or something, you know? But knowing that you're telling the truth, no one wants to listen. You know, that's how it's been for me all my years. For failing her drug test, Vanessa is not allowed to go home on weekends and a month is added to her time, keeping her at the Muriel Wright Center through Christmas. Santana is still being held at Juvenile Hall for escaping the Muriel Wright Center. While she is waiting to be sentenced, she gets caught passing notes to boys out her window. She likes attention, and she likes it whether it's negative or positive. She was involved in a, in a couple of negative relationships with older, older men in their 20s. Well, he's 20 or 21 now. I ended up finding out after badgering a lot of public defenders and and probation officers that this kid was on gang probation out of L.A. Real scary guy, you know, gangster, 
serious history. And this was a guy who she considered her boyfriend, so to speak. What I know is he's trying to change, and that's why I'm trying to stick with him. I'm always going to be here for him. Even if he does go to jail, I'm still going to be out here for him. I think that she's um, the type of kid that gets caught up with peer pressure as far as why she ran from the ranch was that she felt like she was missing something out there and wanted, you know, some excitement. Uh-huh. It's you again. They run away to be with their boyfriends. They run away to act out uh, with drugs or with uh, sexual acting out. And however dangerous these situations may be, there is the hope that there's going to be someone that will genuinely care for them. Maribel is halfway through her day at Valley State Prison, and because of her attitude and gang ties, the inmates continue to single her out. Look out right there. Come on, let's go. Oh, I can't wait to get you in here. Hey, over 143. That's your That's your book. That's your book. Excuse me? I was so scared when she told me that she was going to get me in her cell. I was going to stay here with her for like 72 hours. I was, I was, I was scared. Go, come here. You come with us. Come on. We went through a hallway, and um, there were doors, and then doors that were windows, and there were prisoners in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It was like a room with like eight people in there, right? And if you don't pay her, she'll get one of her broads, and her broads will cut your throat. They were psycho. Like some even looked like guys, you know? They were disgusting and stuff. I was not. There was no way that I was gonna be in there with them. They don't know what you look like. It is a hard experience to go through, even as a sponsor, seeing the way the prisoners approach the program and the techniques that they use. And they've also, there's been critics that have also um, questioned the program. Ain't nothing funny. We got to protect you from 5,000 women up in this damn prison, and you laughing. It's not funny. Nobody better not laugh today. And we want them to see that if you continue on this path, this is where you may end up. Prison, death, you know, it's, it's, it's your decision what you want to do. We just want to show you that this is another, it's a consequence that you may have. Come on with me, Vanessa. I'm getting emotional. That's all right, you can be emotional. Come with me, Adam. Coming up, another setback for Vanessa. Okay, what's your honesty? I'm going to make it. Because I, I, I came so far. So far. I'm not giving up. <laughs> 